wonderful. So, so we are Cortexus, the, the brain data company. Um, I wanted to start with a very simple question. Um, how many people in the world live with neurological disorders? Any guesses out there? I was very surprised with the number that I, that I found, especially when I started to get into neurology, and it's one billion people. That's a very large number. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to have my face in the camera. <laughs> Um, so there's one plus billion people around the world with, with uh, neurological disorders. And, and you may have heard of, heard of many of these, epilepsy, strokes, dementia, autism, um, concussions. It's a very large number, considering that there are seven billion people around the world. Um, and that's where really what takes us to our vision, uh, you know, with Cortexus. Really, we wanted to create a technology that can empower people living with neurological disorders. Um, a little bit about neurological disorders themselves. Um, brain health, uh, another way to put it, is a, is a very long-term uh, problem. So it's not something that comes to you, goes away, and it's done. It's something that you have to follow and track for, for a long periods of time. And, and current devices that are out there for tracking neurological health, they just don't quite do the job. Um, why is that? Um, to give you an example, in the world of epilepsy, we use a technology called uh, EEG to, uh, to record brain's electrical activity. And the current EEG technology is very limited for several reasons. One, it's, it's large, it's cumbersome, as you can see. It takes trained technologies to put the EEG wires on. And uh, the technology or the system cannot be worn more than several days to se maybe a week at the most. And the reason for that is that uh, those electrodes, they are, the way they're placed on the head, they cause skin sores, they cause a lot of irritation um, and, and, and allergy uh, as well. Uh, and also the memory capacity uh, and the battery life of the technology is not very good. Um, and so the, the technologies we have now are very limited. And so we can't really use it for tracking neurological problems over long periods of time. And what I mean by that is years, many years of collecting brain data to see what are the things that might uh, pre uh, predict that would somebody develop Alzheimer's disease or develop um, a stroke or could something that could detect a stroke in real time. So we wanted to come up with an idea, a technology that, that everybody could, could use, could wear. So with that, I wanted to introduce uh, our, our product, we call it Eagle. And, and really, we wanted with the Eagle to really pave the way for what we like to call brilliant technology, uh, really go beyond what is called uh, smart technologies now. You hear about smart watches and smart glasses, but we wanted to create something that's, that's brilliant. And now, why go with the form factor of glasses? Um, number one is culturally accepted. So when you look at any kind of wearable te technology that's out there, it's very difficult to hide it. Um, there's a cultural stigma that goes with wearing something that could be medical in terms of uh, what it does. So people don't want to walk around, go to school, go to work, with wear wearing something that could indicate they have a, a medical or neurological problem. So it's culturally accepted. And it's also easy to use. Um, you don't, uh, just about every one of those seven billion people around the world have seen glasses, so they know what to do with it. If they see it, they know how to put it on. So it doesn't take special training to use glasses. Um, and also with glasses, you can embed very, very, uh, you know, discrete uh, um, electrodes and other sensors, and nobody has to know that it's actually recording um, brain waves or brain electrical activity. And that's why we decided to go with, with uh, a glass form factor. We think it really will change the way uh, we collect brain data. Because this you could wear all the time. You could wear it for many weeks, many years, all of your life if you want. So it really opens up the idea, the, the possibilities of what you could do with, uh, with uh, brain wave recordings. The system we've developed obviously is very comprehensive. It's not just a pair of glasses that collects EEG and, and other biological data. Um, it's glasses that streams data wirelessly to a cloud, and in that cloud, that EEG data is, is basically processed using artificial intelligence algorithms. Those algorithms are currently have been tuned to detect seizures. Um, uh, that's the, the, what we're chasing after right now. And in the future, of course, algorithms, as you collect brain data long term, can, um, can help you detect other things like dementia and, and Parkinson's disease and um, other uh, neurological disorders. Um, and of, of course, where the, the data is stored in a cloud, then it can actually be uh, reviewed by a doctor. So if a patient, for example, has a seizure um, the, or thinks they had a seizure, that data streams to the cloud, the doctor can look at it remotely and make a decision in terms of what to do for the, for the treatment. Um, now, if you look at uh, technologies that are out there in terms of EEG recording, specifically for um, uh, purposes of seizures and, and seizure detectors, they really fall into two categories. Either seizure detectors that are kind of like smart watches that you wear, 
the, the drawback with those is that, and this is this corner on the left upper hand, the drawback with those is that um, they're basically shake detectors. So they can only, uh, they're used for, for detecting shaking type of seizures or convulsions, which only covers 25% of all seizures. And, and, and they don't give you any information about brain data. So it's a very limited type of use that it has. It can't really look at other no neurological disorders. And other EEG technologies that you see on the bottom left, are these are really ones that you would use in a hospital um, that's used for a few days of use, uh, they're made for a few days of use, and they can be worn on an ambulatory setting or uh, in a setting at home or at school or at work. And so you can see really what we're developing in Cortex is really in a league of its own. Um, a, a wearable that can be worn anytime, anywhere, forever, basically. Um, now, our first uh, market has been with epilepsy because that's where EEG is used the most, and the brainwave patterns are very easily detectable, and we have very nice algorithms for that. And also, epilepsy uh, affects a very large population of uh, people around the world. We have 65 million who, ha who have epilepsy. And, and a third of those are refractory to medications, meaning that no matter how many medicines you try, these folks still have seizures, which is quite, can be quite disabling. And in, in the United States alone, the cost of um, epilepsy is $15.5 billion per year. So it, it does have a very large societal cost. Um, let alone, and if you kind of want to break it down in terms of ER visits, uh, hospitalization, these costs are very, very large. Um, we, we, we expect, you know, what we like to call the eagle effect, that uh, basically with having technology like this, uh, patients with neurological disorders and epilepsy will reach the correct diagnosis and treatment quicker. Um, as it was mentioned earlier, in the world of neurology and epilepsy, the, the diagnosis we make is 90% based on what people tell us or that they have observed or they felt. We don't really have a good objective way of tracking it or diagnosing it. And the EGLE will uh, allow us to do that. It will reduce clinic uh, e uh, e visits to the clinic, ER, and, and hospitals, and overall improve the quality of life for caregivers and patients. Now they have something that can tell them how their brain is doing, if they're having seizures or not, and parents are no longer afraid to send their children to college because they're gonna be alone in the dorm room and are, are not wondering, is my kid gonna have a seizure and nobody's going to be there to, to help them. Um, so we've kind of modeled our, our you know, neurological monitoring system uh, based on what car, you know, cardiology did many years ago with outpatient and ambulatory uh, cardiac monitoring. And we think we can achieve similar cost reductions in terms of uh, physician appointments, ho hospitalizations, and ER visits. And we, we suspect at least 30% reduction in cost in these areas. Um, the business models we're following are two-pronged. One is ambulatory mo uh, monitoring. This is a service that will be provided to the physician. So patient comes in, they need to have their EEG done. It's read uh, either in the inpatient setting or an outpatient setting. Um, and there's already a, a CPT code, which is a, a code that Medicare developed for, for giving value to how much a service is worth. And there's a pre-existing CPT code for our system. And we plan to capture 25% of, of that amount, which ends up being 90, $90 per day. Um, and also, we, we have another um, model where we have a seizure alerting system, which is directed towards the patients themselves, where they wear the device, they can purchase it and also pay a monthly fee. Uh, and then it will give them seizure alerting and seizure tracking, and they can count their seizures. Um, uh, and they can, for example, connect their system to a cell phone that can alert the 911 or other um, uh, caregivers. Um, in terms of uh, what we've done so far, we're very proud that we've made very, very significant progress uh, in, our, in our technology. Um, on the left side, you see the R&D. We've tested our artificial intelligence algorithms, and they're very, very excellent. The sensitivities and specificities up to 95, 96%. You don't really see much of a trade-off between those two. Normally, as, as sensitivity goes up, specificity goes on, vice versa, we actually don't have to make that trade-off. And we're actually detecting seizures very quickly, within 1.8 seconds, which is which is darn, pretty darn good. Uh, we have a working prototype. We've developed a web app, which you can see on the left bottom, where it's basically a physician portal uh, that can, that physician can log in and, and basically get a, a bird's, a bird's eye view of how the patient is doing. We've done some clinical testing showing that the system works, and we have very great partners. We're a part of Stardex, uh, which is in a Stanford-affiliated accelerator. I see a, one member from Stardex here as well. Uh, so we've done quite, quite a bit already. Um, our roadmap is in 2019, develop our ver beta version of, of Eagle, and in 2020, get our MVP and do our five-day uh, case submission. Currently, we're doing our seed rounds. We're doing SAFE, 
um, with for $2 million, and that will get us the clinical testing, the MVP, hiring four new employees, and getting us to the FDA, FDA 510K submission. I just want to close it with uh, uh, the fact that really what we want to do with Eagle is really move from the age of big data to massive data. So imagine having millions and billions of people wearing this device. You're collecting neurological data from them day to day and following that for many years in terms of what it, you could do with that to understand the brain is just unimaginable. And these are just some of the applications you can see beyond epilepsy and neurological disorders. Looking at sleep, um, uh, you know, driving safety, uh, computer brain interfaces, people who have lost a limb or have had a bad stroke, they can use this system for inter, uh, interfacing with the world. So we think that the, 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 limit, the, the applications are unlimited. Um, I'm proud to be a part of this founding team. We found each other and we founded a company. Um, and then we're also very lucky to have a very excellent advisory board has, who, who've been helping us uh, quite a bit. Thank you. A couple of questions for Dr. Mutoni. Yes, sir. How do the glasses transmit data? Um, it's, I'm sorry? Does it use Bluetooth? Or um, uh, I, Yes, so the question was, how do the glasses transmit the data? It's, it's wireless, and it's a car, uh, uh, we're doing it through Wi-Fi. So the, it, it has a Wi-Fi connection to whatever Wi-Fi router that's there. Um, and then from the Wi-Fi connection, it transmits it to the cloud, and we're, that's where the data analysis is done. Um, in our next version, uh, we will also, in, the MVP itself will incorporate Bluetooth, so that in case Wi-Fi is not available, it will transmit it through your phone's uh, the connection. But it's all wireless, so so the patient doesn't, the person does not have to be attached to anything. Uh, one other question: sure. What about the electrodes? Mm -hmm. Do they? Do you need special preparation of the skin to get a good electrical contact? Um, actually, you don't. So um, we are using a, a dry electro. Uh, the question is: uh, Do we need a special preparation for the uh, electrodes? And, and we don't. Um, in terms of the EEG world, there's two ways to attach e electrodes. One is what we call wet electrodes, where you use a special conductive paste um, to get good electrical uh, connectivity, and the skin has to be prepped really well. There's also a lot of push for dry EEG technology or dry electrode technology because it's just more convenient. With the recordings we did, we can actually use dry electrodes um, uh, and get a very good recording without prepping the skin. So it really is a matter of the person just slipping on a pair of glasses and they don't have to do anything. One last question from there. Mm -hmm. How do you get the number of the 95% and 96% for the sensitivity and specificity for the brain patients? Or uh, sorry, the question was how? The 96% and 95% that you showed for the sensitivity and the specificity, right. how do we get to those numbers? Were they based on real testing of real patients? Um, yes, they're based on hu human data. So the the question is, how do we get the sensitivity and specificity if that was based on real human data? So that was based on real human data. Um, this was a database of 300 plus patients who had seizures that were pre-marked. And, and we use artificial intelligence algorithms. We have our own uh, machine learning architecture um, for, for training the data set and then testing it. So those statistics you see are based on real EEG data. Um, and, and it has been reformatted to fit um, our glasses, basically, the same number of channels and everything. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Okay. All right. Thank you.